Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. In today's lecture, basically, we will be modeling a simple uh, furniture, um, for example, the sofa and this kind of a setup. Uh, within this setup, basically, uh, we will be using a simple polygonal tools and we will see how we can use and mold the polygonal geometry into forming a furniture. This is Dr. Ishran Bhatti from the Sound Academy. If you're here for the first time, kindly do subscribe my channel and don't hit, forget to hit the bell icon so that you get more latest videos and lectures continuously. So now, let's begin. Let's begin. Um, so if I come back here, again, I have this reference image. You can search any reference image from Google. Just go into it and simple search for sofa designs. You can see there are tons of sofas available that you can design. So it's no basically specific that you should design the same thing. Search for any design that you like and you can go and model that design as well. Um, the basic philosophy of modeling is exactly the same that we need to understand that how we basically create any object. So once we come into Maya, uh, the first thing that you need to understand is that we have to go into create polygon objects and we create various different polygonal objects now since my object is supposed to be a more uh, scale, uh, square type i choose this because this is our initial lectures and i don't want to go into too much complex objects so for a simplicity sake this would be more easier thing to model uh, as we are still in a very basic uh, stage so in order to model this i need a box now what do we have to understand this we need if i take this sofa again these are same thing so if i take this is first uh, armrest uh, this is one plank, then this another plank, third plank, and then in the middle there are two, uh, three different planks, okay? So we can model this from various different uh, objects and we can combine them like we did in previous lecture or we can use one object and then we can create these shapes from one single object. Now here my task is that we do that very easily and simply. Let me show you how I can, what I basically mean. So I go into create, I go into polygon and I create a cube and then basically uh, we create a simple cube. Uh, click and drag on your grid and again this is supposed to be the top of the arm click and drag and I just give it a basic very small height okay now uh, this becomes my base of the object so if you come back here you see this this is my base but obviously it's supposed to be a little bit more thick so what we do is we select this object we go into its channel box if the channel box is not already available click on this icon here or click here or click Control a all three basically will allow you to go into channel box so if you click here again channel box will open if you press Control a again channel box will open or if you have a small tab here you can see channel box written you click here this should also will make it visible sometimes the size may vary i don't know why they do that nowadays too much uh, in previous version it was supposed to be very fixed but now it sizes changes a lot so you just need to adjust that now anyway so we come back here again inside inputs you have width um, depends on how big or width you want to set uh, if I use it a little bit, if I move it higher, for me, for example, this is uh, reasonable width, okay, uh, you can just reduce it to, for example, 11 um, in terms of its width and height 0.3 or 0.4, let me just give it that, again, yeah, sorry, uh, the width is supposed to, height is supposed to be a little bit big because as you can see, this, this is a longer version, so we can give it, for example, we can click on the height variable, we can type in the value depending on how you want to do that so usually what i do is i click on the height and the name and then come into my viewport use middle mouse drag left and right to adjust the height interactively okay so this becomes my height and then again as you can see this is height is one so i can type one here manually as well and this just gives me a very nice uh, thick object as we want it now the next step is basically um, i think this is okay so the first step is basically this base has been created um, and then we can go forward and create the remaining object so uh, we can go Control d and we can create another object at this particular point and then we can say Control d and then we can create one object in the middle so these three objects are created very easily but now you can see this get these two objects almost same uh, width however of the same thickness however the center object is of a lesser thickness so what i can do is i can come back into my inputs but so now you can see that because i have duplicated it we discussed last time Control d is the duplicate shortcut that you can use so once you press Control d key it will duplicate the object then you press w and move it on the top um, however once you duplicate the object you don't no longer get the input node so now in order to reduce the thickness i can come into scale tool to get into scale tool you press r key Remember W for move, E, R, W, E, R, these are three keys. We use these three uh, fingers 
use the alter uh, with the thumb so these three fingers basically create this finger so alter is on thumb and then w e r are basically being controlled by these three fingers so i press w e r we press r and then basically we reduce the size now what we need to do is we need to ensure that the size is 0.5 in other words half of the original two three objects so that i match the proportion of my object sorry so i match the basic proportion of what exactly i'm trying to do here so what we did here is uh, just scale this object to 0.5 percent in its y axis so now you can see this week of this space already available we said perfect this is exactly what we needed we have this objects available now let's just go back and create one more object control d w move it a little bit further just like in this case a little bit higher and we can say even more higher to this point now at this point i want to add few more things to it so what i do is i said okay let's not duplicate this okay and instead instead go create polygon and create another cube uh, of probably the same proportion and height and width and like that press w move it on top of this here okay now first thing i will do is i will try to match the parameters of all these three together so if i select this okay um, let me come back into my inputs you remember the width is supposed to be 11 the height is supposed to be 1 and the depth is supposed to be 0.779 so what i do is i come back here and width is supposed to be 11 height is supposed to be 1 and the depth is 0.771 i guess no sorry point the depth was 1.799 so we go back here and we can say depth is supposed to be 1.779 something like that okay so now i get almost exactly same object and this is what we needed obviously we can duplicate an input graph or we can make a duplicate so that i have exactly same object with the same values along with input i will come back into that later on so don't if anybody knows that remember we we can do that but uh, we're not getting into it so what we did here is we created another exactly same duplicate object now first thing is we need to work on this object okay uh, before you work into it because we're trying to develop a sofa that is supposed to be aesthetically correct if i come back here and you can see this here this object is a little bit off as per this alignment if i come back here and maybe it's not exactly aligned here and this is coming off so we have to ensure this object is exactly aligned correctly so for that we come back into this thing here if you come back into toolbox this is your viewport controls as well uh, these are main tools at the bottom this is single view perspective if you click here you get these four boxes if you click on these four boxes basically you get four different views this is is basically our four different orthographic cameras now sorry or three different orthographic and perspective camera now what these orthographic cameras are they are basically showing you the your view from exactly front angle exactly side angle exactly top angle okay so these are three orthographic cameras that are perpendicular to your exact view whatever view you have these are exactly uh, perpendicular to it okay and they don't rotate they don't turn and they don't move in terms of its angle they always fixed with a perpendicular view 90 degrees angle and it just gives you a very straight view to align to view your objects with a particular angle it's absolutely essential when you're modeling objects angles buildings architectural design to get an exact view of how your environment is basically looking so in this case uh, this is what exactly we are trying to do so if i press spacebar it again maximizes the view if i press the space guard again all the four views are back if you move your cursor over your front view press the space bar it again becomes maximum press the space bar it again becomes minimized and you get the four views back again so here the task is basically for example if i go into my top view this is my top view this means that my camera is on the top it's showing you all uh, from the top angle and now you have the object so you can see this case this is slightly off so in y axis i move it away and then in y axis i move it in this angle so now object exactly aligns on top of each other and i have a fixed angle that i'm working with right uh, press the space bar come back here you can again check these angle views from these angles uh, on the from the front side as well press space and you can see this these are almost aligned as well so sometimes using these different angle of cameras allows you to align your view exactly perpendicularly on top of your object okay so that's we go to it and once we have that now if you remember the view the camera this the width of this side um this plank is not supposed to be that big so what we do is we come into my viewport and um, the height in other words that is supposed to be in this figure is supposed to be small so what we do is we reduce the height to for example let me just say 0.2 percent uh, 0.3 0.4 i think 0.4 is okay okay um, it's supposed to be slightly 
thin but slightly thinner than this one uh, so yeah I think this this seems a good enough value for me okay then what we do is we come back into this something called subdivisions now we have not talked about the subdivisions before what subdivisions allow you to do is it they basically mean that how many divisions you want in this axis so if I click on subdivision width if I set to 2 what this basically now means is that now my object is subdivided twice 1 2 there are two divisions here if I go into height if I divide it now height means that in, in terms of height the object is divided into two subdivisions and depth again means in subdivisions now if it's three so it's three times divided into this object what does these subdivisions do what these subdivisions are basically they allow us to control the object with respect to vertex edges and faces what edges vertex faces are if I go back into my object and for example let me create another polygonal object like a sphere that has a little bit more of vertex and edges so we can see these things more um, in live in action right more clearly so for example if i create a sphere now if i right click and go into its objects now right click means right click your mouse button press and hold don't let go press and hold and you will see this object as soon as you let go of your button the menu disappears so this is the trick so if you press and hold you will get the object and this is called a marking menu means there's a marking line that indicates which option you want to select from the stop or if you want to go into these menus so this is the sh most commonly used tools available here and then some of the more detailed lists is available here and uh, this is what you can do and this is how you can also access certain objects in this uh, certain values properties attributes in Maya so let's understand the segments here so if I right click here you get vertex edges and faces these are three most commonly used segmented components that you're going to be used if I go into vertex first what are vertex vertex are basically dots here these are dots what these dots allow you to do is if you click on these dots you select it if you press W you get a move tool you move it and now you're basically able to move that vertex by moving these vertex basically we are able to deform change modify these objects you can select multiple vertex and then you can basically see that by editing these number of vertex you are able to change or the shape of an object to whatever object you want to create so vertex are basically points where two or more edges intersect so if I click on edge edge is basically this line that you see each of these line is known as a single edge each line basically consists of a single straight line it's a it's a line that basically it can uh, is between what we call two vertex so uh, between two vertex a line is created if you go back into vertex now you can define vertex as a point where two or more edges intersect with each other where two or more edges combine a vertex is created at that point and then uh, the line is basically itself a line between two vertex so two uh, it's, it's like an interconnected uh, it, it's mixed definition you know? so vertex depends on edges edges depends on vertex they both are basically correlated with each other so a vertex basically is a point where two or more lines intersect a line is basically uh, or an edge is basically a line that is created between two vertex so they basically need both right uh, vertex needs edges edges needs vertex and then the third component is a face face is basically a closed area between an edges so a face needs an edge edge needs a vertex and vertex needs edges and edge requires faces to be there so it's, it's just like uh, a loop of things that are dependent on each other anyway so basically uh, entire Maya modeling session depends on these three things these are the building blocks it's, this is like the bricks and the pillars that create an entire building so if you want to create a building you need bricks which and you need players you need material and you combine them together to create a whatever structure you want so vertex edges faces are basically those things uh, we work with these three different components continuously to create whatever object we want to create so for example face is this closed area um, edges again are these lines we can modify edit delete and there are tons of tools available that basically work on these vertex edges and faces to create various different objects right so what our task is to work with these things on this aspect as well okay that's why we have created this thing again because I needed these polygons again so what I do here is that I come back into my object okay and I go into its width and I said I need for example three segments I should be fine and I think three or more be more if you want and uh, in terms of height for now uh, I don't want any segments so I can just leave it to one because we need a one division and then on depth again for now I still don't need any division so I leave it to one as a default value as well 
all right so we have uh, these things available now what i do is i go into right click i go into edges right click and hold go into on it go to its edges click and drag and you can see that the edges is selected right but it has also selected additional edges as well so what you can do is if you click on this single edge and or double click on the single edge it will select the loop for you so if you go back here you will notice that all the edges in the loop are selected by simply double clicking on an edge it will select the entire loop press w and move it to the corner here similarly double click on this edge it will select the entire loop and then again the move this tool to at this corner here okay just eyeball it to ensure that these segments are exactly aligned as they are sh should be okay there we go now what we need to do is we need to go into faces okay and we can select right click face okay and we can select this face and we can select this face as well now this is one way of doing it and uh, we would now simply what we need to do is because this is a plank we need to extract the segments from that particular plank so what i do is i go into edit mesh now we start to using tools that are basically required to create an object so in this case i go into edit mesh and for example i can use extrude tool to extrude the edges of this thing and now you can see this that it starts to create and i will just bring it down to this last point and now we have this space available for us Obviously, I can use one plank, two plank, three planks as well, like we did with the chairs and the table in previous class. But we start, we need to understand that sometimes uh, we need to use more tools. So this is what basically we are trying to do here is that I'm trying to use more tools with it. So you can do very easy task with respect to that as well. So now, sorry. So once you are done with it, we're done with the faces, you go back into object mode and there you go. So you have a one side plank available for you. Then very simply, we just select this, press W, Control D, everything is duplicated, and here we go. Okay, and now if you look at the image, this is basically two sided planes are being created. Now we need a back and a base. For the base, again, what we do is I can select this object here and Control D, duplicate, bring it here, rotate, and rotate it down. And I can say, for example, 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees rotated so again uh, rotation is means that we rotate an object uh, exactly 90 degrees once we have this object i can say that this base should be here now you can see this i need a blast here as well okay so that it's closed and it looks reasonable if it's again going to appear or not i don't know but just let's just create the same plank here as well okay so now in order to do that on this corner basically what we need we need a segment here and then we can extract that area up to this particular point so in order to create a segment here we go into edit mesh and let me use or i think we can yeah we can use something called insert edge loop tool as well okay so now there are two things there are edit mesh there are some tools here and then there are mesh tools there are some tools here don't ask me how they work um, it's always confusing basically these tools are here to insert more edges and more segments and they are basically on working on some predefined things you know so these tools are there to create more tools in other words more segments more sections it's, it's more like a creation tool and these are more like editing tools so they they are already something is already there and you edit them and if you want to create something you go into this mesh tool right um, so in this case uh, we want to create a new segment here so that's why we're going into mesh tools insert edge loop tool you click here and just uh, you see the cursor has changes drag on the edge so that basically means you need to click and drag on an edge so in this case i click and drag on this blue line and you can see this it gives me a dotted line so this dotted line means that wherever i let go it will create a new segment here so i just let go almost eyeballing the same size and hopefully it should be same size it's here maybe i think a little bit too much so press w and move it inwards and now you would note that you have something called an extra edge group created all the way around here we said perfect now let's do the same step right click go into face select a face okay and once the face is selected uh we can go into now because the we have tool is there we want to edit it we go into edit mesh and we click on extrude once you click on extrude basically another gizmo appears this is an extrude tool gizmo what this gizmo does is that it allows you to extrude an object by extrusion means that face is there you extrude something out of it right so in this case we have move tool we have scale tool and we have rotate tool all in one so it's, it's like a transform 
gizmo that has all three tools within one tool so if you click on drag on arrow basically you're able to move if you click on the boxes you would be able to scale it right and if you click on the arrows you would be able to rotate it right so you get all three things within one option available so if i click on the z and now because i want to move in this direction now i have an object available and see this we created this thing very simply very easily right and then i can place it here and i should be doing this nicely okay once we have it here um, i need to make sure it's more like a square kind of a thing and this is further away so one thing we can do is we need to go into right click vertex once you are inside the vertex you can click on the, all these vertexes and you can drag it here so this appears to you more of a square kind of a shape up till this particular point and see so now what we're doing is we're editing so i selected all the vertex you can edit all these vertex you can move it again you can rotate the vertex to create a different shape if that's what basically you are requiring you can rotate it and obviously you can scale these vertex in a certain relevant positions as well so i can scale this thing as well creating whatever uh, different form of furniture that i require right so now once you are done with editing because now you are in uh, component mode this is known as a components you are selecting the components vertex edges faces you need to select an object right click go into object mode right so now you select the whole object you right click you go into vertex you are able to select the vertex only you right click you go into object now you're selecting the entire object what i would like to do is i like to w press move it down at this point here so basically this section is where it should align i think that's what basically it's doing yes somewhat and let's have this sofa created now once we have that uh, they should do the trick for us right now let's create the base or the back of this thing so in order to create that uh, let me see if i can use the same object here again uh, bring it almost at this point here again my because this is my move tool and i need to my move tool to be at the edge of this arm okay and then once i rotate it it should rotate around that edge creating a nice back for me then i press scale tool because i don't want the back to be so thick I can use the scale tool to scale the back down you know if you see this image it's supposed to be a very thin uh, because the form is just supposed to lie around it and i can do that here as well and then i press w and i can move it a little bit back i think that should do the trick right i can delete them in the later portion because i don't actually need it but i can hide it as well and i'm don't not really very much concerned what i'm supposed to do with that okay let's do one more thing right click go into vertex again okay and let's just bring this bottom vertex so i click and drag because i'm vertex mode in this object it will only select vertex of this object so i press that w and i can go back and bring it somewhere around here and bring it somewhere around here okay so now we have a base and complete object created for us okay and move it so i move the vertex manually and brought the vertex a little bit higher uh, so it suits the base so just in case if somebody or we want to view it from the back as well we have this back support available for us right so um, hopefully the angle should be correct we can obviously adjust it later on as well done now the seats so for the seats we go into again create polygon cube and let me just create a cube of this size click and drag bring a polygon cube here press w and press it bring it up here now in order to see it more better again i go back here this is single perspective click on four views see this we have a four views available if you have a larger monitor you can get this more accurately for me it's now in this way now because i'm in this view and i cannot see exactly what's going on there are two things i can do to get the better visualization one is by pressing four once i press four everything turns into a wireframe mode and i can very accurately see that i can place this accordingly or not i can see the size of an object it's good or not or i can alter it press a w same thing i can do here press four to go into a wireframe mode and i can see this oh no this sofa is small uh, so i can increase the size um, for example going into cube and maybe this should be depth i guess yes depth and i can increase the depth a little bit so this is supposed to be my back sofa and i guess it is almost relying on top of this so it has to be inside this wooden frame so i can again click on the width name and just reduce the size a little bit press w so it's just somewhere around here maybe a little bit more a uh, little bit more little bit more 
uh, that's it so it's it's just like a small inch short and they're just touching this thing here and it's top of that so I, I'm getting a better visualization here if this is not comfortable other thing you can do is again press 5 to get a shaded view but at the same time come on to this toolbar here and there's an icon here some called shaded wireframe on shaded view so you can turn this thing on from here by going into shading wireframe on shaded what this will do is it will show you wireframe on shaded so if I go back into perspective shading and wireframe on shaded if you turn this thing on from this button here uh, both options you can now see that you are viewing a wireframe as well as an object so it's the blue lines basically are the wireframe this gives you a much better visualization of how your objects are where there are sometimes helps a lot in modeling once we have done that now let's just convert this into a more round and soft kind of a cushion uh, the best thing we do is by going into again right click select edges and select all the edges of this component so either double click and double click sorry click 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 shift select all these segments or because I'm going to select all things again from these sides and everything just click and drag like that what this will ensure again if I press 4 you will note that all edges are in uh, what you call this color cream color I think I don't know exactly pink color and you would see that all edges are now basically selected once all edges are selected we, because uh, now we are going to do edit so we're going to edit and there is something called bevel Right, this tool is fantastic I use it a lot I will be using it with the, uh, this uh, legs uh, as well what bevel tool does is that it simplifies if I press 5 again it divides your one edge into two edges so it takes one sharp edge and then splits it and creates an angle um, usually that angle is approximately 30, 25 to 30 degree angle so you can note here that th this angle is created and it's just a 30 degree angle that has been created so and then there's a small poly tool uh, settings menu popped up okay you can control based on this fraction again click and drag on this name so if you drag, click and drag it becomes a virtual slider through this virtual slider you can control how much that beveling should occur okay so 0.2 means very little and if you drag it to a larger number you will not get just creates a more long long beveling at the same time segments again this is very important so if I uh, currently see this one so that means that it took the one edge and divided into that one single segment if you click on this segment and click on 2 and let me increase the fraction so that you get a better thing so it's 1 now if you click on 2 so you see it divided into 2 segments if you click on 3 now it's on a 3 thing you increase it and it will get more round as it starts to increase so as you start to increase this segments you would notice that your sofa corners are basically becoming more round and more soft you can increase the fraction a little bit and you can get a better view i think 0.5 i think maybe that's too much let's let's not have that much because we need the sofas to be around a little bit like that and then let's reduce the segments to four they should do the trick so now if i just deselect this right click go into object mode you would notice that the sofas are more round you can turn off this uh sorry the wireframe on shaded to see that it's from a sharp corner like we have this this is a sharp corner this is a very soft round sofas and if you need to increase the size now if you go into inputs you would note that polycube was there and on top of it there's a bevel because Maya works on a node level structure we created an object we gathered object we applied another tool so it, that tool comes on top of it if you edit something at the bottom it might change the shape of the top as well because this relies on this thing so if you change something from the down below this would also be changed let me show you how it works so if you come into polycube and then you realize ah the size is small or i need more segments and if you start to changing the segments you would note as soon as i go from one to two you note everything is not messed up you can go into height as well and you can now note that that beveling is gone the shape is completely different because uh, this polycube relies on this poly node and if you change anything down below it would have an effect on it uh, sometimes some parameters are okay to change for example if i change the depth hopefully it should not create more problem uh, so that it relies from uh, edge to edge i think i just need to create the width as well a little bit more so that i have a sofa that's more uh, covering the areas but uh, so be very careful uh, that if you have applied certain tools now do not change anything underneath it because that relies on top of it once that is done fantastic control d w move it rotate it mm, almost 30 degrees how much again i would just do one thing press spacebar come into your front view press spacebar on the front view you get a front view angle press a w 
rotate it almost so that it matches this thing here obviously this is little too big uh, maybe uh, in terms of height so I come into press R and then let me just reduce it a little bit in terms of height bring it on top here um, let me just bring on top here and let's just reduce a little bit size I'm just reducing the size in terms of its height and not in terms of width because I know that's supposed to be uh, same the height is just a little bit too big so I'm just reducing it so that it appears to me on the, like that so I have a small edge around here and it is just popping out a little bit here so now if I go away again spacebar perspective and you would see that my sofa is being created so I use the same thing just reduce the height and I have my sofas available for this thing over here right perfect thing now the only next thing that we do is that we do not leave the planks as it is remember uh, this is good but if you see this angle um, you would find that these are very sharp and maybe you're not able to differentiate between this plank and here okay obviously it's all great but also it's very sharp so what this means that once we start to put light here this would start to create more sharp edges and not very clear edges so always recommended is that we start to bevel these corners a little bit and give them a very round this currently means that my pig, uh, at this moment it means your edges are very 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 sharp in real, real life these are not that sharp uh, sofas edges corners tables they are supposed to be a little bit round very smooth uh, not sharp it's, it's, it's not like a knife sharp in other words so we need to round them up in real they are like that in virtual in Maya we also need to do that so that when light strikes it creates a more better result for us in other words let me show you what I mean so if I come into render settings we talked about this a little bit in previous class as well so if I click here into render settings and just ensuring that I have selected Maya software again I'm not going to talk about Arnold yet we will do that later on so Maya software is available so make sure you have selected that go into Maya software tab from the quality we select a production quality and the default preset settings would follow we would uh, temper with them later on and I just close it so these two things you need to do uh, or ensure that they have done that Maya software and then Maya software production quality and choose an angle for example in this case I choose this angle and I click on the render okay what this will do it will render my sofa from one angle and as you can see this I'm not able to differentiate this line here I'm not able to differentiate the edges here I get these small cuts here that's okay but I'm not able to identify this again line edges here so uh, keep this figure in mind and I click on this icon what this will do is it will keep the figure in my render view and then I will do a next rendering and we will do the comparison so what we do is we select this object or select the edges that you want to be well in this case I want to apply it on every single edge or almost on the edges of the border so what we do is you double click on this edge 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 double click on this edge and you need to select all the border edges uh, because uh, we want to show that is all edges are applied on this thing so um, let's just select that come back here what easily I can do also is shift because I've already selected make sure you press shift here click and drag and it should select all the edges on that corner as well and shift select this edge and maybe I should have selected if I press 4 I need to select this edge as well this edge as well okay so I need to select all edges at this moment we could just simply select an entire object like we did with this thing um, but in this case I'm not going to select because I don't want these edges to chamfer as uh, well as well okay? so once we have that available even at the bottom let's we can do that as well I guess if I press 4 yes let's just select these as well alright um, so I guess yes uh, easier thing would have been that if you can select all these uh, sorry so we have all these edges selected except the center 3 I think that we should have selected them anyway now what we do is we go into edit mesh because we have objects we want to edit them remember if you need to create something in an object you go into mesh tools if you want to edit you go into edit mesh tools again I will use something called bevel what bevel does it just round its rounds off few things and you can see this already is looking very nice I can say I should have something like this I can add some fractions one or two or three sometimes because it's supposed to be a soft one I don't want that big so I can click on fraction and reduce the size because I don't want the curve to be too big like we did in the sofas so we can reduce it to 0.3 or 0.2 so that it appears nice and soft from distance and if you deselect 
uh, object mode and now deselect and you would note key you can see this edge here if you scroll you can see this edge more clearly same thing i select this box i select this box and i select this box right these are uh, getting out of the control from here we would reduce them so this time i select all three boxes i'm not going into segments because there are no segments in there and we need all their edges so you can select all these three boxes go into mesh tool and go into bevel and now it means that the same tool has been applied on all three objects also it means that whatever settings you apply would be done on all three settings and you can control that on all three settings as well so if you come back here fraction i can type for example 0.2 and uh, segment supposed to be for example 3 same thing I can do here I think 0.2 is a little bit too much maybe uh, 0.1 right I think 0.1 should be okay 0.1 and segment supposed to be 2 then I select this object again fraction 0.1 and then segment supposed to be 2 this is too much again 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.1 there we go okay so we selected that now it's coming out of these three boxes so i don't like that so i select all these three components go into scale tool and i can just scale them down a little bit so they basically go inside this object they don't show up to me that much same thing i would do with this object i will select the whole object this time i don't know not going into its segments go into mesh go into bevel and let me just bevel it to a smaller value um, for example 0.2 in this case and two segments right remember if i go into its bevel it's supposed to be 0.2 so this is 0.2 and these were basically 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 right so they have the main sofa arm has more roundness to it as compared to these small arms uh, so that that's basically what i'm doing or obviously you can choose yourself or use it same as well depends on how basically you're going to do now if i render it uh, from the try to render it from the same angle that we had previously chosen and click on the render icon you would now see that you can see these lines very clearly as compared to previous render right so they are completely gone they're not visible this line is not visible same thing if you use now see this you have a more better option of seeing this of uh, lines the seams are more clear that's because that now because there's an edge to it there are more edges it's not sharp single line when light bounces on it the light is actually reflecting and it's going on all the way to the corners of the edge and it's giving us more prominent edge as compared to previous thing so this is a small trick that we tend to use so even though it's supposed to be round we, uh, or looks like sharp you need to round it off a little bit same thing let's do it on this one as well so i select the whole object uh, let's click on bevel and fraction it a little bit lower for example 0.2 that's what we go for and then segments were supposed to be two this time I select this object, this object, this object, we can select all three, go into edit mesh, hit bevel, and then just reduce it to 0.2, select this thing, 0.2, select this thing, 0.2, then segment supposed to be, oh, I think, sorry, 0.1, these were supposed to be 0.1, and 0.1, sorry, again, point, uh, obviously I can just type it in, 0.1, and then two segments and then I just come back here point one and tab and two tab it just moves that so now we have a chair that's completely done uh, obviously this back is missing so let's just do that thing on the back as well we don't want it to left behind bevel and just come back here and I just want to say that you also should be point two and this would be like two segments there we go done so now we have an complete good looking chair ready for us 